lesson, we're going to talk about epithelial tissues and their structure and function within the body. So the big thing that you need to know is that epithelial tissues make up the majority of the structural tissues within the human body. And that includes things like our skin, our mucous membranes, and parts of our glands. So it's actually quite prevalent throughout the body. So let's look at just a few general characteristics of epithelial tissue. The first thing to know is that the cells are densely packed. So that means they are right up next to each other. There's very, very little space in between these cells, if any. The other thing that you need to know is that um, those cells might usually be in layers and then they rest on top of a basement membrane. So this is our basement membrane. And that basement membrane actually connects the epithelial tissue to some sort of connective tissue. Now, there is an entire lesson on connective tissue, so make sure that you check that out as well. Now, one big thing to note here is there are not actually blood vessels in epithelial tissue. The blood vessels are down here in the base or in the connective tissue below the basement membrane. So nutrients end up diffusing across the basement membrane into the cells and waste products diffuse the opposite direction out to the blood vessels to be removed. The other thing is uh, epithelial tissue usually doesn't contain any nerve endings. The only exception to that is uh, the skin. Now, epithelial tissue is also highly regenerative, which means it just uses mitosis to replace any dead cells. Now, think about how often and easily our skin regenerates, right? Now, a couple more quick terms that you need to know here with epithelial tissue is they have what's called a basal surface. The basal surface rests against the basement membrane. And then they also have what is called a free surface. A free surface means it doesn't come into contact with any other tissue. So think about, you know, the outside of our, outside of our skin or the inside of our mouth. Now, there's also something called a potential free surface. A potential free surface is one that is in contact with another tissue but could potentially not be. And so if it's not it becomes an actual free surface, okay? So the best example here is the inside of blood vessels. If blood is present, it is a potential free surface. If blood is not present, it's an actual free surface because blood itself is the tissue in this case. So let's talk quickly about the main functions of epithelial tissue. There are four, protection, absorption, filtration, and secretion. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of each function. First is protection. We see this a lot in the skin epidermis, which protects us from bacteria, protects us from UV rays, etc. Or we could see this inside the respiratory tract. Um, the epithelium in there has cilia, which are like tiny little hairs and it also secretes mucus. So the benefit of the mucus and the little hairs is it actually helps to trap particles and get them out of the lungs or even prevent them from getting all the way into the lungs so we can prevent infection. So next is absorption. Epithelial tissue can have what's called microvilli. Basically, it is finger-like projections on the outside of the cell. So what this does is it actually increases the surface area. So instead of just having this whoop, straight line, straight length of cell membrane, we actually have all of this surface that we can use to absorb nutrients through the cell and into our bloodstream. So two examples of this are in our small intestine where we need to absorb from food and in our kidneys where we need to reabsorb um, out of the urine and back into the bloodstream. Next is filtration. So filtration is the process of only allowing certain molecules or particles to pass through something. So this happens in epithelial tissue that is one cell layer thick. These are the best filtration tissues. Um, so the best examples here are the capillaries. Again, through when we filter through the blood, we allow small molecules to pass and large molecules get left where they are. And then alveoli in the lungs helps with our gas exchange. Think of this like a coffee filter. So when we have a coffee filter, the water can get through, but not the coffee grounds. Okay, so we allow certain things through and leave other things behind.
Last is secretion. Like I said before, epithelial tissue actually makes up the secretory portion of most of our glands in our body. So this tissue is actually gonna synthesize or create whatever the secretion is for that specific gland and then release it into the gland to be secreted. Now we'll look at glands in more detail in a separate lesson, so make sure you check that out. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is classification. There's two things we look at to classify epithelial tissues, the number of cell layers and the shape of the cells in the top layer. So if there's only one layer, we call that simple. If there are two or more layers, we call that stratified. Now, if the top layer of cells is flat, so it would look something like this, then we call that squamous. If the top layer of cells is cube-like, we call that cuboidal, cube-like, cuboidal. We try to keep things easy around here. And if the top layer of cells is more like a column, then we call that columnar. Again, we try to keep things easy around here. So um, in a completely separate lesson, we are going to talk about the types of epithelial tissue. And we'll dive into each one of the combinations we could have here. So if we had one layer of flat cells, it would be simple squamous. If we had multiple layers and the top layer was cube-like, we would have stratified cuboidal. So make sure you check out the lesson on types of epithelial tissue so we can look at each one of those and their functions. So let's recap really quick. Epithelial tissue makes up most of the major structures in the body. It rests on a basement membrane which connects it to an underlying connective tissue. Now this is important because it usually, it doesn't have blood vessels and it needs to get those nutrients from the vessels in the connective tissue. And then remember that it's highly regenerative. The four main functions of epithelial tissue are protection, absorption, filtration, and secretion. And we classify it by the number of layers and the shape of the cell in the top layer. All right, so that's it for the basic structure and function of epithelial tissue. Make sure, again, that you check out the lesson on types of epithelial tissue, glands, and the rest of the anatomy and physiology course. Now go out and be your best selves today, guys. And as always, happy nursing.